Welcome back. Great to have you joining us again here in the Solar Power Europe office, which has been turned into our Solar Power Summit studio. We're here in the middle of Brussels, in the middle of uh, EU decision making. Wherever you are, please engage with us uh, throughout this day on social media using the hashtag Solar Power Summit. Now, following up on this morning session uh, on Solar for Global Change, where Irina was mentioned by the European Commission as a key partner in Green Deal diplomacy. I have the great pleasure of welcoming Francesco La Camera, uh, Director General of IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency. Very happy to have you here, Francesco. All the more as we decided to work together even more closely than we already did uh, on different subjects, just uh, such as hydrogen, such as renewable jobs and financing. So, uh, great to have you. It's, my, it's really a pleasure, Olburga, it's really a pleasure. I'm very happy to be with you and with uh, all your people and, uh, and participants to these event. It's uh, really a, a great pleasure and honor, I have to say. Okay, I'm very much looking forward to, to chatting with you in the next couple of minutes. And the first question I would have to you, Francesco, is you presented a sneak preview of IRENA's World Energy Transition Outlook just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I have to say, you surprised everyone with a spectacular increase of your solar forecast, 60% more solar in your forecast since your last outlook in 2019, from 8.8 .8 terawatt to 14 terawatt by 2050. How come? So uh, the, uh, the numbers, that we have provided with uh, our review of the World Global Energy Outlook as to take into account the fact that this year we have concentrated our attention on uh, uh, 1.5 scenario, uh, so it means carbon neutrality by 2050. In the previous uh, edition, the year before, we, we dealt with two scenarios. One was the uh, well below the two degrees, and the other one was for a, an, an onset decarbonization, but the year in that case was the 2060. So moving to the uh, to the uh, 250, it makes that our ambition in terms of uh, renewables was going to be higher. So this was one reason that we decided to have only one scenario fully compatible with the one, the IPPC 1.5 scenario. The other one is that uh, we also, uh, moving from 2060 to 2050, we have to uh, increase the share of the possible contribution of hydrogen and green hydrogen in the mix. So it means, it means that also we need more renewable energy for uh, producing more green hydrogen. So these are the two elements that make our scenario uh, seeing the growing of uh, the, the solar capacity. So higher ambitions. Uh, we at Solar Power Europe, we came up with a 2050 report last year modeled by LUT University, where we show that 100% renewables by 2050 and potentially also already earlier, 10 years earlier, is possible. And it would also even come with lower costs. So that would be the lowest cost option to go 100% renewable. What is your take on that? You know, what we, what we did is uh, this year, we, we, the, 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 our scenario is moving from 14% uh, of renewables into the, uh, into the energy uh, final consumption to almost 75% in uh, uh, in 2050, so we are almost there, and we also see this uh, 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 expansion of uh, the the electrification into the system, and we see that uh, the the renewables will provide from uh, the more or less 30 percent today, 25 to 90 percent of uh, the share. 
So we are very close, in fact, to, the, to that scenario. Indeed, very close. Uh, could you imagine also coming up with a 100% scenario in the next years? You know, we have many challenges uh, on this, uh, uh, not all on this, but in relation to what, uh, uh, what we are assisting and uh, many messages that my, my point of view are now extremely coherent with the, the Paris Agreement message. Hmm. So what, what we are saying that uh, really we are, we are not going still now in the, in the right direction. And uh, we have to see where we'll be at the end of this decade to understand how far we can go in 2050. Mm. So we are really concentrated to make clear that we have to act now and that uh, renewables are the only technology ready to accelerate this process and change the path of the events in this decade. Mm. I think indeed we, we both agree massively rolling out renewables and in particular solar in this decade is really decisive and we need to be fast so uh, no disagreement here otherwise the world will not comply with the 1.5 degree of the paris goal and you, you already referred to uh, barriers what are the main barriers from your perspective and uh, and what are what has to be done most urgently to tear down these barriers this answer needs a, 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 to say, an articulate response. One is political. So all I think they agree that we we uh, we have to go for uh, um, for accelerating this process, and this decade is relevant and is decisive. But in the same time, we are uh, these messages that. Uh, uh, more than the 50% of uh, technologies are not yet available. Or where we are also uh, listening to messages where we say that uh, we have uh, to go in this energy transition to a, a transition phase where we still may, uh, may uh, make use of fossil fuel with some adjustment as a CCS or CCS. So first, is politically that has to be clear that we have to run for renewables. And uh, we have also to understand that it's not just a change of tools, it's a change of system. And uh, any time that we lose in making this change, change possible, it's time that we lose in the run to achieve the 1.5 uh, uh, Paris Agreement goal. Concerning what at the barrier, we have talked about the political one, the technical one that we need to invest in infrastructure. So we, uh, we have uh, assisted to the fact that renewables have been able to be a large part of the energy distributed in, the, in, our, in our systems. But surely, if we want to increase uh, this share, we need uh, uh, more flexibility, more interconnectivity in the grid. So we have to use, make large use of uh, of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, of digitalization. So the fund of the recovery has to make a priority to make the grid ready for having more renewables. And also when we talk about mobility, so the network has to be part of this game. But from now, if you want to uh, uh, strengthen this, uh, this, uh, this trend for more electric vehicles on, on our uh, road, there are also the legal a framework, also the, the structure of the contract. So we as uh, ARENA, we have worked on this uh, solar contract and we are going also to work on wind contract just to uh, load, uh, slowing down the, the, the transition cost. So make the legal documentation ready for anyone that wants to sign contract on solar be almost there. So if we will uh, all have all this together, I think that this will uh, uh, maybe a contribution to overcome the existing barrier. Also, also the contract. So the way we do the contract, long-term contract, short-term contract, that said, who is pro, uh, generating uh, energy, who is distributing energy, all this kind of, uh, uh, of a contractual uh, uh, scheme has to be adapted to a reality that is going for a, a new and different energy system. Hmm. 
Uh, indeed, uh, you mentioned the political will that has been very much identified also in the previous session, solar for global change as one uh, of the main areas where we all have to work together to convince policymakers. And the technical challenges you mentioned, indeed, couldn't agree more when it comes to contracts as uh, Sol Solar Power Europe, we are cooperating with many other partners uh, on the resource platform, uh, on PPAs, on uh, on-site renewable contracts in order to, to improve uh, the way these contracts uh, can play their role, they should play and improve the framework. Now, turning to, to another topic, uh, IRENA launched the, the climate investment platform in 2019 with uh, the idea to scale up climate action. One of the pillars is providing support for pro project development and, and also access to finance for renewable energy projects. So we are very much looking forward to seeing the rollout uh, of these activities. Uh, very exciting. When will that happen? So the, the work in this last year, uh, uh, I think this has been very promising. Naturally, the pandemic has not uh, helped us in uh, anyway uh, because uh, you know the investment forum that we are planning uh, uh, an investment forum for each of our, our um, cluster of countries so 14 um, investment forum they has to be in person it's very difficult to organize this uh, kind of event and make them functioning if we uh, do virtually in the same time, we have been able to, to reach more than 300 partners, including all the multi-financial institutions, the most important one, companies, developed bank, developed agency. And in the meantime, we are building a list of projects that may be, uh, I, I would say in the language, bankable projects. And also in this uh, difficult time, we have been able to support a project in Egypt, in, uh, in Senegal, in, uh, in Burkina Faso. So we are also trying to already try to, to see among our partners where there is interest in, uh, in this uh, list of, uh, of projects. Another important element that some way we can connect uh, to, to the CRP is that we are working to a new facility with the Abu Dhabi Development Fund. Uh, there are other entities that are very close to join the initiative as the ASEAN Infrastructure Bank, as the Northern Development Bank. Our aim is to, to raise uh, from one to three billion uh, US dollar of investment uh, starting from, uh, from 2022. And uh, naturally, this is not a big sum, but if you, say, if you just notice what has been invested in renewables in Africa, this means uh, almost 70% of what has been invested in Africa. So we really hope that uh, this could be a, a contribution to, to have. Um, access to energy for much part of the population that still don't enjoy these services. Great initiative. Another topic I would uh, like to discuss with you is diversity. Uh, diversity is obviously very important. We all know that uh, organizations are improving if they're more diverse in what they're doing. At Solar Power Europe, we are giving it more visibility uh, amongst others through our Solar Gender Balance Awards we've just awarded on Tuesday. So I know it is also important to you. Irina has been working on that topic for quite some time. And you just recently started a global solar gender survey. Uh, and I would just be curious to know a little bit more about it. Well, you know, that's uh, uh, Irina and uh, you know Rabia that you know very well is working, uh, I'll say, 24 hours on 24 hours on the, on this socioeconomic impact of the energy transition and gender is, a, is, a, is an important aspect. We have published this gender perspective concerning the energy transition and now we have, we have focused uh, last year on wind and we are focused uh, this year on solar. Initially, contribution now on this uh, study will be much welcome. And Rabia will conduct the study as, uh, as usual and the best way possible. Perfect. We as Solar Power Europe already contributed and uh, we are making a lot of noise about it uh, also in our membership. So uh, very much looking forward to the outcome. One topic you already touched upon uh, quickly and uh, that's one of the areas where we also want to uh, further cooperate is uh, hydrogen. 
renewable hydrogen is is key from our perspective to decarbonize for example the air uh, and maritime transport sector but there are also fossil alternatives which are very much promoted to secure significant market shares so what is irena's uh, wish vision for renewable hydrogen versus gas and ccs and how will you support the rapid deployment of renewable hydrogen which is very much needed so uh, uh, this is something that i'm repeating uh, often in these days last summer one important thing thank say that green hydrogen was going to be competitive in 2050 we show that uh, with our study that uh, we uh, estimate that green hydrogen will be competitive 20 years before than that so in 2030 but the fact is that uh, the companies that came to our last January assembly last January, they say that they are convinced that green hydrogen will become competitive already in 2025. So I think that uh, this gives the sense of what's happening and how the, the, the uh, push to green hydrogen is growing day by day. In the IRENA uh, World Energy Outlook, we foresee 70% of the green hydrogen as a, a, to, a, a, a seven percent of green with concerning hydrogen in 2050 and 30 percent of uh, of blue hydrogen we think that uh, uh in, a, in a in a very limited transition phase the uh, the gas could be used for producing uh, hydrogen with uh, the the uh, contribution of ccs so CCS, just to be clear is the only way that we think ccs can be uh, deployed useful in a, in a useful way and uh, if i may uh, on this i want also to clarify to to, to the people and uh, our point of view on the use of the capture and storage uh, techniques so about CCS, the CCS is not a new technique it's already there from almost 20 years and uh, we have seen the 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 the, the CCS that were that, were, that have been closed because they were not economical so why we have to insist in technologies to store cc cc cc2 when we can produce energy without producing uh, co2 so i i think that the companies should be free if they want to risk want to invest in ccs but not with the public money so the public money and the recovery fund has to go for the new energy system the new energy system of the future so free to go for CCUS, but with your money, the public money has to go for, for green. Couldn't agree more on uh, where the public money should go. From our perspective, we have to bring down the costs of renewable hydrogen as quickly as possible. So the focus should really be on renewable hydrogen. And that's what the European Commission uh, for Europe has also spelled out in the hydrogen strategy. Finally, uh, one last question to you. Uh, Irina is currently preparing its work program for the next two years. Could you give us a little bit of a sneak preview? What are the priorities we should expect? And I would like to take this opportunity to also share with you what we would love to see, uh, which is namely uh, Irina further supporting renewable energy associations around the world, because we think this is very important in order to what we discussed at the very beginning, in order to also shape the political will uh, of deploying renewables globally so uh, first thanks for your contribution that uh, we have received and we have also distributed uh, to our membership because our uh, process is a participatory process we have received comments from government and also from other entities and we will try to take all of this uh, uh, into account in uh, in our in our work so that the work plan reflects what really all the stakeholders and the governments uh, wish to see in the activity of arena concerning the facilities uh, uh, this is an interesting idea you know we through the coalition of, uh, of action we have the already the stakeholders uh, very well engaged and uh, in the work of, uh, of arena uh, we have to 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 consider all the legal aspects of such initiative in the in the end of uh, a intergovernmental agency as it is uh, arena 
We can also consider how to, 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 to investigate if there are any member state that uh, is interested to, 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 to open themselves. That could be easier for a procedural uh, aspect, uh, a kind of facility like the one that you have proposed. So we are on there, we are trying to come to something that could be satisfactory for all. Okay, looking forward to it. Unfortunately, our time is over. I would have loved to continue chatting with you, Francesco. Thanks very much for taking the time. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to cooperating more extensively as we agreed to, to help drive the renewables uh, development. So we are in any way going to stay in touch. Our teams are being uh, in touch on the different uh, topics. Very much looking forward to that. Absolutely. Thanks also. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I just want to say that uh, absolutely we, we need to work together. Uh, it's, it's essential that uh, we join hands because uh, the situation, uh, generally speaking, is, is not perfectly easy. We have to say that the narrowing, the, the path to 1.5 is narrowing, so we have to join hands and to make possible this change that is essential for the life of the planet. Thanks for these closing remarks. I would also like to thank you behind your screens for joining us. After the lunch break, you will be invited to socialize from 1.30 to 3 p.m. different tables on topics such as Agri-PV, solar for buildings, PV manufacturing and many others are made available for you to meet peers, business partners and our Solar Power Europe team. Or you can also just chat with someone you have not seen or heard in a while on one of the smaller tables surrounding the main Remo networking hall. It would be really great um, to have you joining there and also for me it would be a great pleasure to, to meet you there. So I will be there. Uh, please come around. After all the pleasant networking we are proposing to you to join a wellness dance break and uh, Francesco maybe you would want to to join us as well for the wellness dance break. Our solar power summit will be ending this afternoon with a climax on sustainability. That's the theme of our solar power summit driving a sustainable change. We are looking forward discussing how our sector can become even more sustainable. We are already sustainable but we want to become more sustainable you will be able to join the launch of a great new tool, which is a solar sustainability best practice benchmark. And we will be closing this Solar Power Summit with our first Solar Sustainability Award, featuring Bertrand Picard and featuring you, as you will be able to decide who is winning. See you back later. <laughs>